We've been spending all of January talking about how we can have a new start on 2023. And so today I want to talk to you about what I learned about how we do that together as a church. For many years now and still today, if you ask me what my ministry is, I'll tell you that as a church, we're reaching the seeking and growing the convinced. You might have heard that before. My part of that is to lead the vision and inspire people to follow Jesus. Like you, I don't do it perfectly, but that is my heart. That is my goal. That is what I strive for every day when I wake up and when I go to bed saying, how can I do it better tomorrow? It's my goal to live into what God has called and gifted and created me to be. We as a church have done it so long that when I did a Google image search, the first image that came up on reaching the seeking and growing the convinced was the cover of one of our worship services. Okay, that's not the one you see behind me because it wasn't quite as crisp as this one. This one is actually the fifth image on Google search when I ran it. Scripture says that you are perfect because it isn't just my part and your part. It's all of us together making up the body of Christ, and together we're doing what God has called and gifted and created us to do. 1 Corinthians 12, you've heard many times. I'm going to read you a lot of it, but I want to focus on the last verse. So hear it all in context so that the last verse will mean something. Chapter 12, starting verse 12, says, There is one body, but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We are all baptized by one spirit and so formed into one body. It didn't matter whether we were Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, in parentheses. It doesn't matter if we are men or women. It doesn't matter if we are children or adults. It doesn't matter if we are Baptist or Methodist or Lutheran or Episcopalian or Catholic, or whatever, we are part of the body of Christ if God lives in us. Back to scripture. We were all given the same spirit to drink. So the body is not made up of just one part. It has many parts. Suppose the foot says, I am not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it can't stop being part of the body. And suppose the ear says, I'm not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it can't stop being part of the body either. If the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? And if the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has placed each part in the body just as he wanted it to be. If all the parts were the same, how could there be a body? As it is, there are many parts, but there's only one body. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, it's just the opposite. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker are the ones we can't do without. The parts that we think are less important, we treat with special honor. The private parts aren't even shown, but they are treated with special care. The parts that can be shown don't need special care. But God has put together all the parts of the body, and he has given more honor to the parts that didn't have any. In that way, the parts of the body will not take sides. All of them will take care of one another. And if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one is honored, every part shares its joy. Now, here's the key. All of this, we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard it, heard it, heard it, right? Have you heard this? You are the body of Christ. And part two of this verse, each one of you is part of it. It's not just the pastor. It's not just the other person sitting there. It's all of us who believe in Jesus. Each one of us is called to reach the seeking. So how is your part of the body doing that? Each of us is called to grow the convinced, those that are already followers, those that aren't perfect yet. Each of us has a part in it. What is your part? It's important The church and the kingdom need you. Your part of the body matters because we're all part of one body. And if one hurts, we all hurt. If one excels, we all have joy in it. So here's your challenge. I want you to finish the statement today of what your part of the body of Christ does through you. Now, I'm going to model it again. 
Our church is called to reach the seeking and grow the convinced. And my part of that is to lead the vision and inspire people to follow Jesus. It's what I'm trying to do right now, isn't it? So I want you to finish this sentence as your challenge for this week. Our church is called to reach the seeking and grow the convinced. My part in that is fill in the blank. What is your part? If you need help, ask your pastors, ask your person, talk to somebody you know and trust. Find out what your part is because you have a part just as I do. You also may not do it perfectly, but I am thanking God right now for your part in the body of Christ. Without you, we would be less. With you, God can reach and grow others into the image of Christ and a stronger part of the body of Christ. This is the last challenge for January. It's the last devotional you'll have for going into this new year in the first month of this year. If you go back through these five, how are you doing? I'm hoping it's more helpful to you than just a resolution. That's my prayer for you. That's my challenge for you. Go be the body of Christ. Amen.